Well, between battling the coronavirus and pushing to reopen schools on time, plus a slew of major Supreme Court rulings in recent days, plenty on the Trump administration's plate right now. So let's talk about all of it and more uh, with White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany, who joins us now on Fox News tonight. Good to have you, Kayleigh. Good to join you, Shannon. Okay, so two rulings today on getting access to the president's financial records. It's been a fight that a New York prosecutor and three House committees have been after these documents. Here is how Congressman Eric Swalwell, he is a Democrat, frequent uh, critic of the president, also happens to be a lawyer. He's, here's how he read those decisions. This is an overwhelming win. Uh, a court, uh, including you know two people that he appointed and thought would be loyal to him, I think the law is so clear that no one's above it and that the president, too, has to follow it. Okay, you and I are both lawyers as well, and in reading the opinion, I saw clearly that the court says the president does not have absolute immunity against a state criminal subpoena. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. How do you see these cases? Yeah, that's right. Well, Congressman Swalwell perhaps needs to go back and read the opinions because first it's worth noting that his he and his Democrat colleagues were rebuked. Uh, they were basically engaging in a political witch hunt trying to get these documents and they were rebuked by the court. They couldn't get access to those documents. But on the second case you mentioned there and, and Swalwell referenced, um, as Kavanaugh pointed out, this was a nine to zero unanimous ruling in the sense of this needs to go back to the lower court, be remanded mm -hmm. to the lower court. Uh, and the majority opinion from Roberts actually laid out several ways uh, for the president to proceed in court by making a bad faith argument with state law or by going in the constitutional route, making a constitutional argument uh, that the subpoena specifically is wrong. So I would point that out to Congressman Swalwell. Yeah, and the president's attorney, Jay Sekulow, you know well, and our viewers do as well, that uh, he has said they will continue to litigate these cases, both on the House committees and also on this issue of the prosecutor in New York. Now, Professor Lawrence Tribe, a Harvard professor, don't know if you had him while you were there. No. <laughs> um, but he's been tweeting on this, and specifically about the Vance case. He thinks, listen, this thing can be sped up. He says, the Vance case should be expedited in the lower courts. If the Nixon tapes case could be decided in three months and Bush v. Gore could be decided in one month, this really should not drag out beyond the November election. So we know there's more legal wrangling to be done at the lower courts. Uh, it sounds like he hopes these documents uh, are settled once and, 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 you know, for good in favor of the prosecutor so that um, people are going to get a look at them before the election. Now, it's supposed to be a secret. This is grand jury. Um, but as Justice Alito noted in the arguments, uh, things do tend to leak sometimes. Yes, well, you know, I'd point back to what Jay Sekulow said, that there are several legal and constitutional arguments to be made in the lower court. But I would also note what we view as the absolute partisan harassment in which this subpoena was issued. Um, one of the things that I think was pointed out, one of the best points made, was in uh, Justice Alito's dissent, where he very clearly talked about how you could see state courts being utilized by elected prosecutors, in this case, an elected prosecutor, a registered Democrat, Cy Vance, a user a subpoena as a weapon to harass the president. So that's the view here on our end, and I'm glad that Justice Alito at least hinted to that in his dissent. Yeah, uh, and there are people warning across the spectrum, listen, uh, wherever this goes with this president, it can be used against another president if opposing parties, whether it's in the House or an elected state prosecutor, wants to go after someone. So still questions there to be settled in these particular cases. So let's talk about coronavirus. There have been spikes. There have been record days for the U.S. in notching cases. A number of states either putting their reopening plans on hold or rolling them back. Vanity Fair magazine saying this under the headline, White House hopes Americans will just get used to dying of coronavirus virus says Trump hasn't only failed to take adequate action, he's actually regressed in his approach to the pandemic, reverting to his prediction that novel coronavirus will magically go away. Quote, I think that at some point that's going to sort of just disappear, I hope, he said last week. Is that a fair assessment of where the White House stands tonight? No, I don't think it's a fair assessment at all. Where this president stands uh, is he believes that we have done extraordinary work on therapeutics, um, extraordinary work at changing the nature of this virus. So now uh, we're testing so much. We're doing more than 40 million tests. So that, that means we're identifying more cases. But the real metric the president looks at is the mortality rate, which has come down. You know, at the height of this virus, you had um, 2,500 dying in a day. Now, because of the work of this administration, it's 200 over the weekend were the numbers. So that's a tenfold decrease we've seen. Uh, we believe that the nature of this has shifted, and we believe that's a very unfair assessment uh, just there that's been listed out. 
We have talked a lot about the push now to get kids back to school. I hear from parents every day that they want to see this happen. Uh, many of them think it can be done safely. There are others who have concerns. Uh, but Emily Oster, uh, an economist at Brown University, says this um, when we're told the kids aren't spreaders and that it's okay for them to go back. She pushes back, saying even if we think kids tend not to get sick and they don't transmit very much, the process of opening a school involves a lot of adults interacting with each other, and there definitely are many teachers, given the age our teaching of our teaching workforce, who are at higher risk for COVID. So it's not just about whether kids get or spread this. So how do you all account for the rest of that equation, the adults who have to be involved in reopening schools? Yes. Yeah, so one thing I would note is throughout this pandemic, we've had essential workers. Um, you know, you in the media, Shannon, are an essential worker. Our meat packers were essential workers. People keeping our food supply chain running were essential workers. And we at the White House believe teachers are essential workers. Uh, we believe it's essential when you have kids who we see abuse cases not being reported, falling in some states by as much as 55 percent, because we know abuse cases a lot of times are identified identified at school. You have the American Academy of Pediatrics saying that keeping schools permanently shut can lead to morbidity, if not mortality, among students, not to mention educational deficits that set back uh, predominantly low-income students that, that are disadvantaged the most. It's paramount. Our teachers are essential. Our schools are essential. And that's the position of this president. Okay, somebody else worried about COVID is Roger Stone, who may soon have to report to jail. He's out there talking about his case and the possibility the president may look kindly on him in his situation. Here's a bit of what he said today. I want to get your reaction. He could pardon me. Then Dick Nixon and I would really have something in common. Or more likely, he could just commute my sentence, which means I would still have to battle it out on appeal which, frankly, I want to do because I want an opportunity to clear my name. Kayla, do you know if there are any discussions or considerations by the president to pardon or commute a sentence for Roger Stone? So I'll leave that to the president. Um, if he may has any announcements on that, he'll be the first to let you know. But what I would note is that the president does believe that this was entirely unfair. Uh, he believes the jury, jury four woman in this case uh, did not act appropriately. And moreover, he notes often that you have guys like Andy McCabe, who committed perjury, uh, who's out and about. You have people like uh, like Clapper, James Clapper, who committed perjury before Congress on the issue of wiretapping and surveillance and is out and about, not to mention Comey, uh, who leaked confidential information, and even John Bolton, who leaked classified information. So the president sees a two-tier justice system here and thinks that Roger Stone was unfair, but I'll leave any announcements to him. We will stand by for that. Uh, Kaylee McEnany, White House Press Secretary, thanks for making time. Good to see you. Thank you, Shannon.